All right, hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about scientific notation or engineering notation and uh, we'll go over a few examples of how to deal with numbers like this. So you might have seen in a few of my videos I talk about uh, like resistors, I call them 1Ks. Well, what does the K mean? Or sometimes I talk about milliamps or uh, gigabytes, kilobytes, uh, things like that. So that's what we're going to talk about is what do those mega, what is the, the giga, what is the kilo, how do you work with these numbers and what do they all mean? I'm going to show you a way to kind of remember it as well. So uh, this is what you want to do and this is, you can Google this and see what, what all this is, but basically what we're going to do is start at the unit place and we're going to go off three zeros over to the right, and we're going to call this the milli. Three more zeros. Hopefully, I don't run out of room. We'll call this the micro. Three more zeros out, and we'll call this the nano. Three more, if I can make it, we'll call that the pico. Okay, yeah, and this, I could probably could have edited this down a little bit, but I'm just kind of doing this as I think about it. Three zeros to the left gives us K. And yeah, I know this isn't making any sense yet. It will here soon though. Mega, I'm running out of room. Giga, and Terra. Okay, so here's how this works. You've got a unit. So like, let's say you've got one amp. We're gonna use amp is our starting thing. So we're talking about amps or current um, measured in a circuit. Uh, this could be bytes as well, if you're more familiar with that. Could be anything, it could be meters even, okay? I mean, you could, it can go on and on, right? You've heard of millimeters, you've heard of kilo, kilometers or kilometers, you've heard of, um, even micrometers. So anyways, let's uh, continue on here. Um, let's take the example of an amp though for now. Let's say you've got one amp. So that would be a unit here. So the U here would be um, your one amp. So just put it right here next to this and pretend this is a decimal point. So you have 1.0 amps. But what if you had a milliamp. Well, what that would be is you come down three zeros to the right here, and this is milli, and you would put your one milliamp right at the milliamp place. Okay, so one milliamp is equal to point zero zero one amp. All right, does that make sense? So this is, we could also just erase the U there and put A, M, A, micro A, nano A. So milliamp, microamp, nanoamp, picoamp, kiloamp, megaamp, gigaamp. So you can go either way. So what I'm showing you here is how you can move around this fairly quickly. So let's just take a few more examples. Let's say you had 10 microamps, okay? So you would come down here and you put your decimal place right at the microamp spot and you put 10 microamps, okay? So then ask yourself, how many milliamps is equal to 10 microamps? Well, you just put your decimal point at the milliamps place and then fill in the zeros. So that would be 0 0.01 micro or sorry, 0 0.01 milliamps is equal to 10 microamps. Okay? Now I know we're working a lot on this side here, but we'll work over there in a second. I'm going to change the unit. So you could you can move around fairly quickly here and you can get to anywhere you want. So let's change the unit now to something you see every day, and that is uh, bytes. 
also, if we just put, um, I'm gonna make this B here. There's no such thing really as uh, millibytes. So I'm not even gonna, you know, let's not even worry about that side. Let's go right over here to KB, MB, and GB. And then I'll even go out to TB. So let's say you had one byte. That would be right here. How many kilobytes is in one byte? So put your decimal point right at the kilobyte point and then fill in the zeros. So that would be one byte is equal to 0 .001 kilobytes, okay? That's not a good way of representing bytes. You would never say I've got 0 .001 kilobytes. What you would see a lot though, is let's say you had 10 kilobytes. So you put your decimal point at the kilobytes place and then put the 10 in. So you have 10 kilobytes. How many bytes is in 10 kilobytes? Put your decimal point back down to the bytes and then fill in the zeros, zero, zero, zero. And you could see you have 10,000 bytes is equal to 10 kilobytes. Okay, so you can see how we're moving around a lot and this is this makes things easy. And you can go, you can move that way like we did or let's let's just keep it at 10 kilobytes for now. And let's say you had 10 kilobytes and you wanted to know how many how many terabytes is in 10 kilobytes. So you come over to the terabytes here. And this would be something you would never see in real life, but some evil teacher might want you to do this. And he wouldn't use simple numbers like 10. You'd have like, you know, uh, whatever, some crazy number. So anyways, uh, you would fill in the zeros, put your decimal place over there, zero, 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 zero. So that's how many terabytes are in 10 kilobytes. So that's point zero 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 one. All right. Now, that's the easy examples. Now to get a little bit more complex, let's switch the unit again. This time, we're gonna go with uh, meters. Okay, so that would be my my unit there. This would be um, millimeter. This would be uh, micrometer. This would be nanometer and this would be picometer, which you don't see a lot. Well, maybe in the future. But anyways, one other thing is, is you can break this up. This is engineering notation where everything is in thousands or uh, everything is represented into three zeros like this or everything's divided or multiplied by a thousand. But you could also break this up a little bit more and say this is the deci and then this is the centi. So you could, you know, you've heard of a centimeter, so you can convert centimeter back and forth too. And I'll leave that in for now just because we're going to move around a lot here. So let's let's take an, first an easy example here. So we have one meter. One meter. Put your decimal at the unit for just a meter. And how many, well, let's take the new one. How many centimeters is in one meter? So you just move your decimal point over to the centimeters and fill it out. 100 centimeters is equal to one meter. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, now for the, the example that could get a little tricky is what happens if you have a number that extends past a decimal point like 13.586 millimeters. So I put the millimeter point, I put the decimal point at millimeters and I have 13.586 millimeters. How many micrometers is in 13.586 millimeters? It's the same thing. You just move the decimal point over to where you want to go, and that would be the micrometers. And you can see the number just continues right out. So you have 13,586 micrometers in 13.586 millimeters. So you can move around very quickly, and you can go the other way too. So if you still had that number in millimeters, 
somebody might ask you, how many meters is that equal to? So put your decimal point over there now, and that would be equal to 0 0.013586 meters is equal to 13.586 millimeters. All right, so that's the, um, that's the breakdown of scientific notation and engineering notation. Um, and let me see if I have a calculator here because I want to show you how you can play with these numbers a little bit. So on your calculator, you might have a little button that has one of these guys. Or it might look like this, E. Well, basically what that's telling you is it's telling you what, what milli, what micro, what nano, what pico. So you kind of have to memorize a few things here. You need to know that, you know, a millimeter is going to be negative three, which is, which is equal to time. The way this works is that negative three would be times 10 to the negative three. So take a number, take your one here, and then multiply it by 10 to the negative 3, and then that moves this 1 to the right three decimal places. Okay, I know. Who cares what all this means? You just want to use it. So what you do in your calculator, if you had 1 millimeter, and you needed to multiply it by 1 kilometer over here. So if you needed to take 1 kilometer times 1 millimeter, actually, let's just use real numbers, 5 here and uh, 10 here. So put the that's Oops, meant to put it a little bit forward there. 10 kilometers times 5 millimeters. You need to know that kilo is 3 up. You need to know that mega is 6 up. You need to know that giga is 9 up. Okay, and we're just counting zeros. Just like millimeter is equal to minus 3, Micro is minus six, nanometers is minus nine, pico is minus 12, okay? And then uh, unit would just be, uh, well, here we go. This would be, uh, well, forget about those for now, but you can just go minus two, minus one. So if we wanted to take these numbers and use them in our calculator, we would go five millimeters times five K, so five, I have to hit the second button, and then I have the little E minus 3 times 10, uh, second E, 3, okay? And then that gave me a value of 50, so it canceled out the units. Now, if it didn't, though, if we took that and multiplied it by, say, 5 micrometers, Instead, see that's how it works. See, we were up a thousand, and we were back a thousand. So it sort of, it sort of canceled out those, uh, those units. So, anyways, here we go. So now I'm going to go five e to the minus six times ten e to the three, and now we get a point oh five. Now, if you put your calculator in scientific notation, you would get fifty e. Um, negative three. So you'll actually get this in your calculator. So anyways, that's how that works with calculators. That's how you calculate it out. I'm sure if you're learning this in school, your teacher won't let you do that. You'll have to do it manually like this. But uh, anyways, there's, there's also a little tricks when you're doing these multiplications with the units and how you get cancel things out and everything. But I'm not going to get into that here. I just wanted to break this down for you. So I uh, hope that helps. Thanks for watching.